Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, February 28th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the TSA detains a libertarian blogger after seeing Bitcoin in his bag. And a Mexican holiday trumps the Bill of Rights in a t-shirt case that has reached federal court. Then, tension in the Ukraine builds as Russia moves into position for a possible military strike. All that, plus... Infowars! Infowars! <laughs> That's up next on the Infowars Nightly News. Russian President Vladimir Putin stoked concerns that Moscow might be using its military might to sway the outcome of the three-month standoff in the Ukraine. They have already ordered snap combat drills near the border involving 150,000 troops and nearly 900 tanks, as well as Air Force drills training pilots to attack enemy forces. It seems like a clear indicator that Russia is preparing to invade the Ukraine. And now the interim government that's set up in the Ukraine after the violent coup that took place this week is calling on the United States and Britain to intervene militarily after unidentified soldiers stormed an airport in Crimea. The troops there, they made no apparent attempt to interfere with the running of the airport or trying to take over any key infrastructure. In fact, they were content with just strolling up and down the car park at a leisurely place, apparently deliberately for the benefit of television cameras. But today, Russia has admitted that it has moved troops into the Ukraine to protect Black Sea Fleet's positions. Now, Ukraine, of course, this interim government is accusing Russia of staging an armed invasion. Crimea is along Ukraine's peninsula, and it has very strong ties to Russia. The population there is nearly 60% ethnic Russian, and it's very pro-Russian as a whole. So just on the heels of Russian troops moving into Crimea, Russian lawmakers are now proposing two bills that would simplify both the annexation of new territories into the Russian Federation and the process of granting Russian citizens uh, citizenship to Ukrainians. This signals that Moscow may be attempting to absorb Crimea. An unidentified Russian official told the Financial Times, if Ukraine breaks apart, it will trigger a war. They will lose Crimea because first we will go in and protect it, just as we did in Georgia in 2008. Now, given the latest developments, including Russia's recent military buildup and Sevastopol's city council handing power to a Russian citizen Monday evening, while more than a thousand protesters were outside chanting Russia, Russia, it's highly unlikely that Moscow will be giving up Crimea without a fight but clearly indicating just how involved and what a central role the U.S. played in the overthrow of their democratically elected government there. Ukraine's new interim prime minister is a former banker who met with both John McCain and Victoria Nuland weeks before Ukraine's president, Viktor Yanukovych, had even fled Kiev. So they were planning this weeks in advance. Now, back in December, around the same time that top U.S. diplomat Victoria Nuland announced that the U.S. had invested $5 billion to help Ukrainians achieve a new form of government, Senator John McCain met with Svoboda party leader Ole Tiyanabok, and they shared the same stage at an event during which McCain gave the United States blessing for the opposition revolt. As recently as three weeks ago, Newland met with both Tiyanabok and Arsene Yatsenyuk, who is now Ukraine's interim prime minister. And in a leaked phone conversation that we played on Infowars.com, again, Newland was caught red-handed scheming to install Yatsenyuk in the government before President Viktor Yanukovych had even fled Kiev. So we can definitely see the new, the new World Order bankster motives going on there to set up this EU puppet government. Now, Yatsenyuk's history as a banker makes him the perfect candidate to help assume this role of technocrat and give over, you know, sell the Ukraine into the IMF debt slavery. And according to Zero Hedge, they report today, it's already begun. The annexation of the country's banking system by a benevolent Europe, 
is complete. Ukraine's national bank has imposed temporary limits to withdraw money from foreign currency deposits to sums equivalent to no more than what would amount to about $1,500 a day, also known as capital controls. Now, Ukraine's currency is crashing at a record pace, and so they'll limit the amount of foreign currency in circulation. The people there are, of course, able to withdraw as much of the country's currency as they wish because the country can just print up as much as they want to. So in summary, first the banks are going to abdicate their control to a pro-European central bank. And now the citizens face the first of many capital controls, which will simply aggravate the fund outflow. Uh, even more, it's going to lead to an even faster drop in foreign reserves. And then they report that we will see inflation and a counter coup, much like we saw happen in Egypt. Now, today on The Alex Jones Show, Joel Skousen came on and he offered an alternative angle to what's happening in the Ukraine. I highly recommend you check that out. Uh, what he had to say was that the Russians aren't just so innocent as we might seem, that they might have a little bit more going on. It might not be as simple as just the EU and Soros in there, but perhaps the Russians manufactured this crisis as well, as well um, sent some fake Ukrainians in to take over this actual authentic Ukrainian uprising because no doubt the people there are well and truly tired of being controlled by Russian corruption. So I definitely highly recommend that you check out that interview with Joel Skousen today on The Alex Jones Show if you're interested in what's going on in the Ukraine. It gives a different angle. It's complicated, very complicated. So that's a really, really good interview. But now for a bit of hilarity coming out of our own country and our bumbling TSA. A liberal blogger was detained by the TSA after he had opted out of a body scanner. And the official word for why they were detaining him, the TSA agent said, we saw Bitcoin in your bag and we need to check it. <laughs> well, anyone who is living under a rock, Bitcoin is a virtual currency. It does not exist in physical form. So this man, uh, Barker, he is a co-founder of Bitcoin Not Bombs. And he says that it must have been either clothing or promotional lapel pins for his Bitcoin Not Bombs in his bag that prompted the curiosity from the TSA screeners. Barker says, obviously the TSA has been trained, although poorly, to look for Bitcoin. When they saw all the metal lapel pins in my bag, they probably thought they hit the jackpot on a stockpile of coins. Whatever training they had, it probably included that stock photo of brass tokens that everyone uses. My evasiveness only quickened their bloodlust as they imagined a big bust and possibly a free pizza and soda in the break room. So apparently in addition to catching terrorists, the TSA is also trying to stop virtual money laundering there in the airport. But in true Dick Johnston wonderkind fashion, another TSA moment, a woman reported that a TSA agent in Phoenix didn't think her Washington DC issued driver's license was valid for flight. According to the woman, an agent with the TSA took a look at her DC license and began to shake her head and said, I don't know if we can accept these. Do you have a US passport? The issue here is that the district is not a state. The TSA requires a state issued ID in order to fly. Everyone, the entire population of DC has to use their DC driver's licenses to fly. So that's incredible. Now, while I do think that this is hilarious because it means that all of our DC based politicians are gonna be put on the no fly list, these are the brainiacs that are being trained to harass you while you travel. So <laughs> that's amazing. Can't wait for my next trip out of the country. Now, in California, a federal court has denied the First Amendment, saying a school has the right to suppress the First Amendment in the name of safety. During the Mexican Cinco de Mayo holiday, students wearing American flag t-shirts were asked to turn them inside out. They took that case to court, and the court said that fears of racial violence by students outraged over the American flag displayed on these t-shirts 
outweighed the right guaranteed by the Constitution. One of the judges there said, our role is not to second guess the decision to have a Cinco de Mayo celebration and whether that would be offensive or the precautions put in place to avoid violence. The racial issues unrelated to the Bill of Rights made it reasonable for school officials to proceed as though the threat of a potentially violent disturbance was real. So just the threat of violence, potential violence, means that your First Amendment right will be squashed there. Now, one of the attorneys representing the students says they're going to appeal, and his argument was that the Ninth Circuit upheld the right of these Mexican students celebrating a holiday of another country over U.S. students who are proudly supporting this country. So what do you all think about that ruling? Do you think that that was right? Do you think they should never have had a Cinco de Mayo party in the first place? Do you think these kids should have been allowed to wear their American flag t-shirt? Do you think that the court needed to get involved and the school is right to say that safety trumps the Bill of Rights? If you have an opinion on that, and I'm sure you do, please leave your comments below this video on YouTube and let's get a discussion going. Now, coming up after the break, John Bowne and I took to the streets of 6th Street, Austin. It's a notoriously lined with bar after bar, and we met up with some really amazing American geniuses out there. Same kind that we meet on our average man on the street, but these folks had been partaking in the truth serum. So we went out there to find out if there is indeed any hope for America, and hilarity ensued. So stick around, that's coming right up. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. Special assignment, ladies and gentlemen. Looking for the true patriots. Is the knowledge still alive and well in the party scene on 6th Street in Austin, Texas? Can you name all seven continents of the earth? the earth. So there's uh, Asia, Africa, South America, North America, Europe, Antarctica, South, no wait, oh yeah, it's Australia, no.